everyone! Welcome to the spoilers for TTFN! Because honestly, this book nearly killed us and I suspect the next one will and you'll never hear from us again. We are now in the sophomore year of our three main characters and the big deal this time around is Angela's father has lost his job and so Angela now has to move to California and the world because Angela is the most whiny, annoying, self-obsessed character you have ever encountered. She's just like, you have a problem about you? Why didn't you tell me? Why can't, why don't you need me? This must have been my fault even though I had nothing to do with the problem. She's just so overly dramatic that it makes you want to stab yourself. And that's the major problem with this book. The characters are unlikable, but they're so stereotypical to a point where they're not really characters, they're just kind of like stock people. If they were unlikable people and more char like more like characters, then yes, maybe this book would have been better, but you know exactly what's going to happen because you just have to look at their three different personalities. You have Angela, who's super overdramatic and everything is about Angela. You have Maddie, who's your crazy party girl who's totally doing crazy things, but aren't, isn't actually because she, like they're like oh maddie's such a slut because she sleeps around she slept with no one as far as i know but suddenly she's a big slut because that's what she says she does and then last but not least there's zoe who is your very kind of stereotypical like i'm the good girl and you can't say certain words about around me because they make me uncomfortable and i go to church and i believe in god and that is one of my other major problems with this book is just the the flack she gets for being Christian hurts me. It's just kind of like, this is what we're focusing on. We're not focusing on maybe helping her overcome some of her like social awkward things, but oh no, we do that in the most horrible way. That is a completely different rant. They're just, they, they rag on this girl and it just, you realize like, you feel bad for her because all of her difficulties talking to other people and being so shy is because her two friends are just monsters to her. <laughs> None of these people are like nice people. You don't want to be their friends. You don't even want to know them. They're just horrible people and they're horrible people to each other and I don't know why they're friends. <laughs> like, like there's this one conversation that later on in the book where it's just like, why are we even friends? And you're just like, yes, <laughs> yes, why, why are we friends? Tell me, tell me now. Somebody explain, but, oh. Okay, basic plot. We have gone to our sophomore year. Zoe has started working at a kid's daycare called Kidding Around, which Maddie turns into a whole bunch of just really horribly <laughs> phrased jokes. And at that place, there is a guy there's a guy who was into Angela and she never did anything about it and she just kind of kept him on the side but then all of a sudden Zoe gets to know him and she really likes him but she doesn't tell Angela because Angela would make a big deal out of it and so that's one of our major plots is the whole I'm secretly seeing this guy but if Angela finds out and then Angela when she moves away and she's just like oh it would be so nice if I had someone back home and so now Angela like gets drunk and tells <laughs> the guy that wouldn't it be nice to kiss me or something? And there's some controversy. And now Angela doesn't want to talk to Zoe because, oh, how did you go behind my back? And I told you not to fall in love with him because he was mine. And it's just like, but you never liked him. What are we doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, Maddie is currently going around with this guy who they've nicknamed Chive. And Chive is dating this other girl, but he's messing around with Maddie because reasons. And, and he's also got her into smoking pot, which she just does because he does it and she doesn't actually like it, but she doesn't tell her friends that. So they're going on and on about pot and blah, 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 blah. When they write pot and her being high on pot, like she's like on cocaine or like LSD or something like that, it's just like completely <laughs> wrong. Um, and then Maddie just has to be a bitch to everyone. <laughs> um, Zoe is trying to get over her repression of sexual things. Okay, okay, that... <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my, my major issue with this book is since Zoe is so shy and repressed, Maddie starts giving her these dares to overcome this. And when one of the dares, it's like, I want you to tape marshmallows to your nipples and go to the mall on your shirt, but I want them to be taped to your nipples. And Ma like Zoe's like, no, <laughs> are you high? And what does Maddie do? She just turns around like, you're such a chicken shit. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Deal breaker. <laughs> Deal breaker. 
break her. Can we just tell her to go screw herself and like move on with her lives? Because honestly, who does that to a friend? Like just. And the thing is, they play this off as this is like the best thing that happens to Zoe. Like that was manip like that was emotional manipulation. That was bullying. That was really, really gross. Like how can you play this off as a good thing? Anyways, okay, I think we're rambling now, but we have a lot to get out of this book. But our point is, this whole book is filtered through these characters who you just, if you're thinking about it, you just hate. And so the plot, well, I don't know, it might have worked for somebody else, but just listening to these characters go on and on about their stupid problems and just being horrible people makes this book just too much to take. Where Maddie and Zoe's their thing is my thing. Your problem is Glendy. Oh my god. I even forgot. <laughs> Angela goes to California and her dad's boss has a daughter and the daughter really wants to be friends. Like, she doesn't have a lot of friends, but through Angela's perspective, she's just this horrible bitch when all she does is like wear a vest and she has a little Care Bear thing. That's it. And Glendy's like one of the nicest people in this whole book because Angela is a total bitch to her and she's like, you know what? It's okay. You're going through a hard time. I understand. I'm just going to be here for you. And Angela's just like, I hate her. She's so, she smells like taco salad and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you are an awful human being to this girl who's being like genuinely nice and understanding to you. What is wrong with you? And I want to talk about Glendy versus Angela because... Glendy seems like a nice human being. So. <laughs> the major problem with this book is it is very, very vapid. And it's just... I don't really like to go into morals. Like, um, what do you take... What, but what you would take away from this book is it is okay to be immature. Like, they're very, very immature. And it just... There's being immature, and then there's being overly immature, and it's time to grow up. And you're thing. hurting people. Like, they're, they're, they're hurting people. Like, they're just cruel about everything. Like, there's these offhand comments about the one character's brother's girlfriend, who they call Pelt Woman. Um, um, so much so that they have forgotten what her actual name is, okay? <laughs> um, just like, why are my parents doing this to me? Okay, okay. The thing about this book that really, really pisses me off the most is when I was in high school, I was forced to move. I had that happen to me. Now, granted, I was only moved, like, 20 minutes down the street, but I had to go to a different high school. But you know what? It sucks, but you can make it work. You have, like, clearly they're still in contact with Angela. It's just a three-hour time difference. That's not going to kill you if you're such good friends as you say you are. High school is not forever. <laughs> God. So we have ranted about this book, oh my and goodness. I know we've been a little like all over the place, but there's just so much to bitch about in this book. But we're gonna leave it here because we've gone on long enough. We haven't even touched on the patriarchy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, anyways, if you really, really feel it's necessary to torture yourself, this is a good book to just laugh at. Write comments in the margins if that helps you get through. Because yeah, that's that's what we did actually. Let's see if I can find a good page. Um, Your one of us comment. Oh, where's my one of us? Just pass it. Oh, damn it. Um, so basically, what we've been doing with these books yeah. is we've been passing them around to our friends. I have no idea where my copy of TTYL is. It's somewhere out in the, the abyss, and one day it'll come back to me, and we can talk about just the random comments. <laughs> but. So basically, this is what a page looks like. It's all in chat speak and cool, but we're writing comments. And yes, there is my one of us, one of us, one of us, because what do they say? Power to the bracelet, all bow down and chant and believe. One of us, one of us. So yeah, um, it's kind of mindless, but at the same time, what was the other book we were talking about where when you actually start thinking about it, it really kind of hurts you a little bit. Uh, it was a recent review. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do it. All right. So we will hopefully see you guys next in our next review. And have fun, guys. <laughs>